Hello friends, hope you have been well. The online news world has been thrown into chaos, but we are here to bring back some order or at least some tech news you can't get on Facebook anymore. Welcome to the Dirt Report Tech and Telco News from all around Australia. And if you're new here, make sure to like this video if you did and subscribe to be notified of all new videos. And if you'd like to support us, you can tap the join button below. So in today's episode, we have the Facebook fallout that has hit more than just news outlets. NBN Co price increase, what does that mean for you, a triple C internet report, and NBN Co's million dollars worth of bonuses. Let's get started with the intro. Google has slid into News Media Corp's DMs like the sly billionaires they are, making deals under the table, under the mattress, and under our government's very noses. But the Australian government doesn't care what happens in the dark. They have won against the giant Google, and $60 million will be flowing right into Murdoch's pockets. Oh, sorry. Um, I mean the liberal media news outlets. No, that's not right at all. Sorry, sorry. I mean our unbiased and diverse media landscape is going to be getting 60 million dollars a year so the job is done the first problem is that only a few big media corporations are getting that sweet sweet Google nectar and all others are left to fend for themselves but for a few hours at least they had another large social media platform to communicate with their audience but Facebook was yet to make their move and with a 40 chess move they annihilated the entire Australian news media conglomerate in an instant. Well, the independent ones anyway. Facebook removed all news media outlets' ability to post and share their news articles and left a skeleton of a page with some basic business information about that news corporation. Not only that, but our government controlled Facebook pages were also taken down from WFIR Services, ACT Health, South Australia Health, and Queensland Health because, you know, good timing with the human malware. Slowly but surely, appeals were made and many have started to return, so all is not lost. So let's take a step back. Right now, your Facebook feed will not contain any news articles from any Australian media outlet, no matter how Murdochian or independent they are. Now on the first page of Google search, we only see the biggest of news media outlets. You know which ones. And in the independent side, those independent voices have been muted and left with no digital platform to voice and share their views on. They end up on the second page of Google, where nobody goes. You see, we have the most diverse and fair and balanced media landscape right now, is what I would be saying under the rule of the Soviet Union 40 years ago, and at this stage, Alexander Solzhenitsyn must be twitching in his grave at the thought of what's happening in Australia. Here is what Facebook had to say in their statement. Their proposed law fundamentally misunderstands the relationship between our platform and publishers who use it to share news content. It has left us facing a stark choice, attempt to comply with a law that ignores the realities of this relationship or stop allowing news content on our services in Australia. With a heavy heart, we are choosing the latter. The discussion was focused on US technology companies and how they benefit from news content on their services. We understand many will ask why the platforms may respond differently. The answer is because our platforms have fundamentally different relationships with news. Google search is inextricably intertwined with news and publishers to do not voluntarily provide their content. On the other hand, publishers willingly choose to post news on Facebook as it allows them to sell more subscriptions, grow their audiences and increase advertising revenue. In fact, as we have made it clear to the Australian government for many months, the value exchange between Facebook and publishers runs in favour of the publishers. This is in reverse of what the legislation would require the arbitrator to assume. Last year, Facebook generated approximately 5.1 billion free referrals to Australian publishers worth an estimated $407 million, which is a lot more than what Google's paying. For Facebook, the business gains from news is minimal. News makes up less than 4% of the content people see in their news feed. And journalism is important to a democratic society, which is why we built dedicated free tools to support news organizations around the world in innovating their content for online audiences. I have linked the full statement below. Similarly, when a warlord is violently removed from power, it creates a power vacuum in that area. 
and a small but even more ruthless group fills that void, taking that spot and creating an even worse situation. You may be wondering, what the hell am I talking about? Well, it looks like anti-vaccine misinformation and other conspiracy theories Facebook pages have filled the news void. Peddling their bullshit without a care in the world, we are now facing a bigger problem than ever before. Large pools of misinformation flowing freely through Facebook is now becoming a hotbed of a idiocracy and it looks like news. But news is banned. So we have a much bigger problem on our hands. There's one strange potentiality that has come out of this. As we all know, social media platforms have the ability to swing elections in any direction that they want. Right now, for Google, the Liberal government has caused them a lot of grief and cut their revenue. With the power to change their search algorithms in any direction, I can imagine positive labor stories to start making their way to the top. Right before the next election and helping the only other party that could change things and get into power, I would not be surprised that this was the feather that tipped the scale for Labour to win the next election in 2022. Let me know your thoughts below. How are you liking not seeing news articles all over your Facebook? Will this change the outcome of the upcoming elections? We still have a while to wait. Let's move on to our next topic. Before that, make sure you like this video if you did and subscribe to beat Google and Facebook in their own game. And the government, I suppose. NB and Co has decided it needs a bit of cash in the bank. After all, paying bonuses out is not that cheap. That story is up next. But for now, let's talk about the proposed price increases and how they could affect you and your loved ones. NB and Co originally deferred any price increases due to the human malware pandemic, hoping to ease the monetary burden on Australians and their RSPs. However, the time has come to look forward and make some money. NB and Co's original plan slated for 2023 needs the average revenue per user to hit $49. It is currently at $45. So what are they planning to do? First of all, they can reduce the included CVC component of the median to low packages, which would mean RSPs to get the same amount of CVC and maintain their evening speed promises would need to upgrade their customers to the higher packages, which comes bundled with more CVC to then share across their connections, hence buying better margin plans from NB and Co and increasing the ARPU. The other option, which at this stage seems more likely is to increase the AVC by just $2 for services with 50 megabits and higher. This increase would be offset by the inclusion of more CVC, making it easier for RSPs to maintain those speeds. I don't know how RSPs will respond to this. Would they potentially pass the increase onto their customers? Many have in the past. If you remember when uploads were decreased with the new 100 down 20 up plans, to then have the 100 down and 40 up plan, you'd have to pay an extra $10 per month. The issue will again bring up the argument of scraping the CVC altogether, which I believe would be the best long-term approach for RSPs, users, and actually ultimately NB and Co. It would reduce complexity and give a much clearer understanding of pricing for RSPs and customers. In fact, I believe it would even increase NB and Co's baseline. This doesn't help to lower the entry level plans either. I still think at the current price of the lowest, cheapest plan is way too high. At $49 is what I found with 100 gigabytes per month in regards to data and 12 down and one up speeds, that price is just extremely high. So NB Co talks about this decision as not being so black and white and requiring a lot of consultations to make the prices and any future decisions work for everyone. Though they seem to be the only ones holding onto CVC based pricing. Everyone else's opinions are scrap it. But let me know your thoughts below. Should we scrap CVC? Is a price increase actually required? Now in keeping with the internet theme here, let's look at NBN wholesale market indicator report for this quarter. The ACCC, while on one side completely decimating media diversity in Australia, they're at least keeping the NBN in check. Let's have a look. Total services are up to 8.1 million, up by 3.6%. CVC capacity has obviously fallen after the human malware pandemic eased by 2.3%. There has been an increase of services with 50 megabits or more by 4.4%, which is fantastic news. Telstra still has the most customers and yet cries every day at 45.5% market share, followed by TPG, Optus, Vocus, and only leaving 7.5% for all other providers, who I think are certainly better anyway. Overall, it seems like people can reach or at least pay for the 50 megabits plans, and it also seems like the most popular 
this probably stems from affordability and the technology access limiting by speed. But at the end of the day, nothing groundbreaking here. What we are seeing is increased speeds and increased connections overall, which is great news. Another thing that is increasing is the pay packet for NBN Co employees. A great segue, please, please hold your applauses. So let's talk about the latest round of bonuses, all $77.5 million of them. You may remember that a few months ago, we talked about 850 staff members earning over 200K annually. This wasn't a problem at all. You need to attract highly skilled people with high salaries that make them stay and put effort into such a large infrastructure project. It may not be as sexy as Tesla, but it's a big and intricate and requires a lot of problem solving, a lot of skills and experience. After all, NBN Co is a technology company. In fact, it would fit in really well in Silicon Valley, but only from the outside and only as a premise of what it could be. I've always thought it could be the most innovative and powerful government entity where one could yearn to work there, but instead it's a technological joke due to its backwards approach. Lots of funding, dumbass ideas. This week, new data has shown that a total of $77.5 million in bonuses have been paid out between July and December 2020. You could say that with 6,500 employees, they all get a bonus over $11,000 for their great work but I doubt it. So NBN Co hit their internal targets, hence the bonuses. In fact, big boss Steven Rue was paid 1.2 million in bonuses alone, topping out at a $3 million paycheck. Not bad at all. This also makes him the highest paid government employee. And those paid a little bit less, like Michelle Rowland had a few choice words to say about this. NBN Co and Minister Fletcher have tried to prevent the Senate from getting this information for 47 days. And now we know why. It is offensive that 77 million in taxpayer funded bonuses were paid out at a time when the cost of the NBN has blown out by a further 6 billion and during a nationwide recession. And then commenting about the ousted Australia Post Chief Executive Christine Holgate, who was paid $1.6 million last year, uh, but then quit in December after it was revealed she spent $20,000 on luxury watches for executives. Oops, nobody likes watches. Cold hard cash is better. $77 million, but oh, $20,000. Roland asked. Scott Morrison said the purchase of 20,000 in Cartier watches for Australia Post executives was appalling and disgraceful. Where does he stand on this? I guess don't buy watches, just give them cold hard cash. But hey, NBN Co needs to increase their AVC pricing by $2 per month. Otherwise, there won't be any bonuses, right? Let me know your thoughts below. Should a government entity act like this? I would be very supportive if the company was making huge technological strides instead of propping up copper cables. In fact, they could be discovering new technology and then reselling it to other countries. So much potential. So, on that bombshell, we have to end this episode. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Make sure to like this video if you did. That helps with the Google algorithm, of course. And if you'd like to support us, you can tap the subscribe or and join button below. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed your week and we'll catch you all in another one. Bye! Similarly, 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 similarly. Told to...